Look what we have here today, a Winged Warrior, 1970 Plymouth Superbird, 440, rotisserie restored, documented, number matching car. Now I'm gonna tell you a quick story about the Winged Warriors. They built the 1969 Daytona, and the reason they did that is because they couldn't squeeze any more horsepower out of their cars for NASCAR racing. So what they focused on was the aerodynamics. They literally hired a rocket scientist to help design this car. Everything you see, well, it was actually the Daytona. And everything you see, the nose cone, the scoops, the wing, that's all for real. That's not for show. That helped achieve the record speed of 200 miles an hour. That was the first time that was achieved on a closed circuit track was with the Dodge Daytona. So the Daytona was winning races. Meanwhile, Richard Petty was driving the Roadrunner, and he felt like he hit a ceiling, that he couldn't win any more races with that car. So he jumped ship and he went to Ford. So in 1970, rather than uh, focusing their energy on building the Daytonas, they said, let's build the Plymouth Superbird, and that way we can hopefully get Richard Petty back on our team. So it worked. They got Richard Petty back, and they won so many races. Now, there was the rise, the fall, and the rise again of the Winged Warriors. Uh, the rise was them winning all the races, setting records, and then the fall came because they won so many races and set so many records. NASCAR said, this is too dangerous. We have cars doing 200 miles an hour with those brakes, and uh, it just wasn't safe enough anymore. So these cars literally changed NASCAR's rules. The following year, you had to have a 350 motor or smaller. Uh, so there was no reason to build the Superbird or the Daytona anymore because uh, they just didn't need them. So the rise and the fall, and then I said the rise again. Another reason I talk about the fall is when they were at the dealerships back then, it was an ugly car. Can you imagine driving home and showing your wife uh, the car you just bought for your family with the nose and the wing on it? She'd say, turn around, take it right back. Well, these cars sat on dealerships collecting dust. Some dealers even took the parts off and just sold them as roadrunners. Uh, but now today, they're highly sought after cars. Obviously, uh, they're just so recognizable, uh, such a big part of NASCAR racing history. They are the probably the most desirable muscle car there are, the Daytonas and the Superbirds. So that's my story, and it must be true. I got it all off the internet today. You can go to volocars.com, and that's where you can read all the information about the car. Uh, and that's where you can look at all the pictures and find the price tag. We also have financing with 10% down. They'll finance like 12, 13 years on almost every car we sell if you go to volocars.com. If you enjoy the video, subscribe. You never know what's going to be rolling in here. Then click on that bell icon and you'll be notified when the next one's posted. But for right now, join me. Let's go for a spin. Okay, now this car in particular was rotisserie restored. It was one owner about 20 years ago. And I think that's about how old the restoration is. Extremely dry, clean metal. The frame rails, the floor pans, all nice, clean metal under there. It's all painted the body color, lemon twist yellow. All the suspension, everything was rebuilt at the time of restoration. It's not been used much since, and it has been maintained and, and well kept. Our shop goes through each car with a test drive. They put it on the lift, and then they go through and repair whatever little things are needed. The drain plug was leaking on the uh, oil pan. They fixed that. We fixed reverse lights. Uh, just a list of miscellaneous things. So the car is serviced and ready to go. <clears throat> uh, it has a nice sounding, correct style exhaust with the chrome tips. But you'll hear when I back it out, they've also added electric dumps. You can open it up and it sounds like it's right off the headers. As if the car wasn't uh, noticeable enough, you got dumps you can open up. Uh, it does have disc brakes in the front. All the components look clean and proper and the way they should be. Now the body. 
Uh, first of all, let's talk about the aerodynamics. It has the nose cone. This is a metal nose cone with flip-up headlights. Those do work. The nose is an original. It's in excellent shape. It has extended front fenders. I think they're off a coronet. Uh, so the hood is extended. It has hood pins. These covers were put on here because without the covers, I, I guess in the wind tunnel, it just created uh, some effects they didn't like. Uh, these scoops were actually, I was told, the fender would be cut out underneath it, and they squatted the car down so low that, so that the tire could come up in the scoop. That's one of the stories. Uh, and it also just sucked away uh, air. So uh, everything was functional. The wing uh, isn't just to stand out in the crowd. That was also uh, very functional at, at the high speeds they were going. Uh, it has a flush mount rear window. And they all had vinyl tops because at the factory, they did their conversion here and they just did sloppy work and they put a vinyl top over it. And then you have these little filler pieces, also part of the reconstruction of this area for the flush window. And all those things added up uh, meant they won races. They gave them the edge. So the body is very clean and straight. Uh, no rust down here. It's all smooth. It lines up nice. All nice, clean, smooth, all looks good. The body's in real nice shape, and like I said, the paint's probably 20 years old, and it's holding up very well. Um, <clears throat> it is painted lemon twist yellow. The original color was B5 blue with a white interior. I think the yellow looks amazing as well. And the overall paint job is very nice, probably equivalent to what it would have been like brand new in 1970. It has a little bit of orange peel, you know, little dust or imperfection here or there, but it presents itself very, very nicely, smooth and glossy. Uh, up front here, this blackout and the Roadrunner, all that looks to be in great shape. Uh, right now, the antennas broke off. We do have a new one ordered that will be uh, replaced. The windshield in the gasket looks new. The mirror is nice and shiny. All this trim, the, the chrome frame looks new. This is polished. Door handles look like new. All the rain gutter trim is polished. Vinyl top looks new. Rear window is crystal clear. It has the Chrysler logo on it. All the decals all real nice. No issues with the wing. The back bumper is re-chromed. Everything's looking really nice. The trim around the back window looks real nice. So these are going to be the rally wheels, and I think they'd be 15-inch. Uh, and they look to be nice restored wheels. They've been painted, and then the trim and the cap are probably new. Uh, yeah, they are 15-inch rally wheels at all four corners. So that's the outside of the car. Let's open up the trunk and the hood and go inside. Now, these wings are actually metal. I used to go to a car show, and the guy would always be there with his Superbird. He'd be sitting up here just to freak people out. Okay, so in the trunk's a little different on these cars. It has two uh, jacks, but yeah, the paint underneath here is nice. The sticker's replaced. Uh, they did put on a new weather strip. It's a little sloppy on the edges. I know what they were doing here. They were probably looking for the uh, hidden VIN numbers, which here it is right here. Here's the hit, hidden VIN number. It matches the car. For some reason, all Superbirds did not have those. A uh, serious collector told me it adds 10 grand when it has the VIN number back here and on the core support, which this one has. Uh, and then what I was jumping to was they have two jacks. You have a scissors jack, and then you have the bumper jack. Well, up front, you don't have a chrome bumper to hook that to. That's why you have two different jacks. You have two different styles, front and back. It has a rally wheel, a tire. The mat looks good. Overall, painted up real decent. But not a, not a high-end concourse uh, car, but it is a rotisserie restored, very nice car. And this is authentic. This is a real deal car, folks. Door jams look real nice. Weather strips replaced. Door panels look mint. Armrest handles look real nice. The tachometer is nice and clean. The rest of the gauges are a little faded. They look original does have a new dash pad. None of this is cut or broken. It's all in very good shape. 
Glove box liner looks good. New carpet down on the floor. And then I forgot to mention the documents. This is in the Chrysler registry. Galen Govier himself uh, verified that this is one of the actual uh, NASCAR Superbirds. And here's a build sheet. Here's another build sheet. Here's a third build sheet. All three of these build sheets are for this car. So absolutely documented. And then here's the original warranty uh, booklet with the VIN number and the name where it was sold new in Tennessee. Uh, so yeah, this documentation goes with it. It's in the registry. Seats are reupholstered very nicely. The steering wheel's real nice. <laughs> Got the Roadrunner, beep beep. Uh, headrests are real nice. The back seat's all upholstered and side panels look good. And headliner looks like it was redone. Dome light works. Visors look real nice. So in, inside the car is very good condition as well. Looks like it has all of its seat belts. This thing barely fits in here. So on the Superbird, you got the two hood pins and then the safety latch. There is no first latch on it. The engine compartment is very clean. Uh, it is the number matching, VIN number match, 440 motor. Uh, I didn't mention it's a Torque Flight automatic trans. Um, and it's all correct. The manifolds. The air cleaner, the valve covers, the exhaust, all of that looks correct. It has Chrysler plug wires. The engine bay is clean metal. Squirters are hooked up. It has original Roadrunner horns. Correct hoses and clamps. Chrysler radiator, correct cap. It has power steering with the extra cooling on it. It has power brakes. Now, the numbers I were talking about they are here. There's numbers stamped here. We'll get a picture on our website, but there's numbers that match the car. And then you have the original fender tag right here. So that all helps verify its originality. Maybe you weren't going to get noticed in this car. Uh, they have exhaust dumps. That way you really get noticed. So I think the car is a really neat story. I didn't do a very good job of telling it in the beginning, but this is a part of history. And anywhere you take it now, I mean, it stands out. Uh, just a very recognizable, very important uh, car here. Um, and this is the real deal for sure. I was just looking off camera and I found the other hidden VIN number. It's under this sticker. So that's the VIN number of the car. And apparently not all Superbirds got that for some reason. The ones that do, uh, it just helps in authenticating it is the real deal. So, go to volocars.com, talk to the salesman. They'll help answer questions. They'll help get it delivered. They'll help you finance it. They'll help you measure it, make sure it fits in your garage at volocars.com. Hope you enjoy the video. Subscribe. Click on that bell icon because you never know what's going to come in here next. Thanks for watching.